I'm Philippe Monteiro, Professor of Strategy at INSEAD, and I'm delighted to have today with us uh, Carlos da Costa. Carlos is the Executive Director of Credit, Planning, Marketing and Technology at the Brazilian Development Bank. Carlos, you're very welcome. And can you just start and how do you see the new role of development banks in Brazil, in the world and the Brazilian Development Bank? I'm really glad to talk about one of the greatest challenges of our times, development, country's development. And uh, development banks have been playing a very important role in the last decades in several countries. In Brazil, for instance, BNDES has been the responsible for, for more than 50% of infrastructure financing in our history. We have a fantastic institution with uh, 2,600 people, around $250 billion in assets. We are presently the third largest development bank in the world. Uh, and we are right now facing a deep transformation. A deep transformation not because development banks have lost their edge, but because the world requires them to act differently. Acting differently means being responsive to some of the greatest challenges in the present times. Digitalization, social inclusion, climate change, intangible assets, the importance of human capital for, con for, for countries and companies. A, uh, a long history, development banks have financed mainly fixed assets. The Korean Development Bank, for instance, has been responsible for most of the infrastructure in that country that brought them to a very backward situation in terms of productivity, uh, economic inclusion, to one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Fixed assets, however, are losing importance. Mm. Right now, more than 90% of the value of the S&P 500 companies uh, uh, is um, proportional to their intangible assets. You mean 90, 90? Nine 90, zero. Nine zero. Mm -hmm. yes. In 1975, it was less than 20%. 90% is intangible assets such as human capital, technology, brands, distribution networks, organizational capital, and so on. As development banks, we have to change in such a way that we can provide society and companies with means to finance intangible assets. And that's a dramatic change in our role. Yes, and I think, Carlos, everybody now talks about digital transformation. Digital transformation here in Europe, in the US, in Asia, how do you see this in Brazil? And how do you see the role of BNGS in kind of allowing digital transformation, helping, coordinating, and what's the potential impact for Brazil? Digital transformation requires three things. First of all, physical infrastructure, that's necessary. We need, for instance, for full-fledged this digi digital transformation and Internet of Things devices and so on, a 5G network that uh, is broad enough to cover companies, to cover government, to cover citizens, and so on. The second requirement is people, people who are talented and skilled to live and work in such a digitized world, innovative world. And third, we need new organizations, organizations that are less command and control and more in favor of coordinating, exchanging ideas, uh, less risk averse, that look more into the future than into the past. So how can a development bank mm -hmm. stimulate this transformation? The first part is obvious. This is what we have been doing in the last decades, providing financial instruments, either debt or equity, to stimulate the growth of uh, the digital infrastructure. Second, and this has been one of the transformations of development banks, stimulating and also providing finance to education and training of professionals. We are facing right now a deep change in the way that people work. People who used to be skilled 10 years ago are becoming unskilled today. Mm -hmm. And this is an important issue, social and economic issue. The third part is companies change. That's harder. That's harder because it's, it's not as obvious as the first one that what needs to be changed. 
each company has its culture. We don't have a framework or a recipe for all kinds of companies, but we can provide instruments to stimulate innovation, to stimulate the adoption of new technologies, to stimulate clusters of companies, to stimulate interchange of people, interchange of technology among companies, among countries, and so on. And I think at the beginning we were talking about this idea of infrastructure and the importance of the infrastructure. And when we think about digital transformation, definitely IoT is going to be really important. And for IoT, you need 5G. To what extent is Brazil, where Brazil is in that stay, in kind of in that segment, and also what can the development bank do? For the first time, Brazil will be one of the leading countries to adopt a telecom, the, the, the newest uh, telecommunications technology. Hmm. And we are going to be the main providers of funds for the investments uh, to be done in the country. However, Internet of Things, require, even though it requires infrastructure, more than anything, it requires coordination. Coordination in standards, coordination in the innovative ec ecosystem to develop new products, new devices, new things that mm -hmm. will adopt internet, coordination among companies that will adopt these, uh, all these new devices, coordination among customers, co coordination among governments. And we released uh, an IoT study with all the steps to make sure that Brazil will become one of the leading nations in the world in Internet of Things. We have defined some key priorities, key priorities for the country. The first of them, smart cities. Our cities have very difficult problems to overcome. Mobility, violence, waste management. IoT can help them leapfrog. Second, health. Hospital 4.0, also much more efficient than the previous uh, ways of dealing with uh, health. Third, agriculture, the, what we call the Tropical Farm 4.0, with the most recent devices that will transform the way we deal with productivity, with uh, tracking of, of goods, with uh, endemic problems and uh, sanitary problems in, in, in our farms. And fourth, advanced manufacturing or Industry 4.0. In Brazil, we have not reached Industry 3.0. And what is beautiful about the digital economy and the digital world is that we don't need to. We can leapfrog from Industry 2.0 to Industry 4.0. Even though this is a giant step, it's feasible, but it requires coordination, which is one of the key roles that development banks are accepting. How do you see, is there any interconnection between this possibility, this digital leapfrogging, uh, and also how the, the business environment in Brazil can improve? Certainly, the business environment in Brazil is improving. We are advancing in several dimensions. Car wash operation, for instance, was an important step to overcome some crony capitalism problems of our economy. It would happen. It would maybe, it would happen in a different year, with a different company, with a different part of the government. But what digitalization brings us is transparency. Mm -hmm. The society, more often than not, knows what goes on within the government. That transparency that digi digitalization brings us is what is o helping Brazil overcome the corruption problems that we used to face. On the other hand, the Brazilian relationship culture helps. It's an asset for the country because in the digital economy, it's very important for us to establish networks and connections among people all over the world. Right now, if we have digital uh, processes, we can become modern uh, uh, government in few years. And that, that was, used to be an unimaginable in the past. That requires investment though, and that's one of the most important challenges that emerging markets face. We need investment, we need to channel savings, we need to make those investments become productive and uh, that's one of the most important roles that development banks have right now. Thank you, Carlos.
Thank you, Felipe.